Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of BMED 202. In this episode, you will be shown how to draw a shear force diagram for a simply supported beam. Now, in this example, we have three point loads being applied at different points on the beam. Now, the purpose of drawing a shear force diagram is to determine the shear force that is acting throughout different sections of the beam. Due to the different loads that are being applied on the beam, there are different forces that are acting on the beam that is putting the beam under what we call shear stress. That shear stress, if the beam is not able to resist that stress, will cause the beam to shear. Now, in the one of the previous videos, I explained what shear is. Let me see if I can pull up a diagram. Okay, this is a diagram of a beam that is undergoing shear. Now, when there's one upward force and one downward force, if the beam is not able to withstand the shear force that is being applied as a result of these two forces being applied, the beam will undergo shear. Now, the shear can take place with the left portion going down and the upward portion, the right portion going upwards, or it can take place where the right portion is going upwards and the left portion is going downwards. I don't know if I said that right, but you get the idea. These are the two different ways a beam can shear. Now, one is referred to positive sh as positive shear and another is referred to as negative shear. I'll show you to demonstrate that a bit later. Now, let's go back to the beam. Now, different sections of the beam, for example, this A section will be undergoing a different shear force separate and apart from the B section, separate and apart from the C section, separate and apart from the D section due to the different loads that are being applied. But what is the shear force that point A or section A, section B, section C and section D is, is being exhibited as a result of the forces being applied? So in order to calculate the shear force that these different sections are experiencing as a result of the different forces that are being applied, we have to draw what we call a shear force diagram. Now let's go ahead and do that. It's a very simple diagram and all that it takes, let me draw my zero line. All that it takes is using the forces that are going upwards and downwards. Let me demonstrate. The first thing that we do is to draw a zero line. So we're going to extend down lines from the beam. And this is only done after you have calculated your reaction forces. And I've done this using the graphical means. And I've drawn my diagram to scale. And I've brought down lines that are in line with all the forces. So this is my zero line. And at this point, I'm experiencing zero kilonewtons of shear force for a simply supported beam, that is. And over this side, it is zero. This is basically telling you that the beam cannot shear at the end. Remember, shearing is this action. When this takes place, this is shearing. You cannot break a stick at the end. <laughs> so that's basically what is proving. Now, once we have the zero line, we are now going to represent each force on this diagram. So at this point, there's a reaction force of 5.15, and we are going up by 5.15, right? Then we will bring across this line until it touches the first line that is in line with the first force. And we brought this up because R1 was an upward force, the reaction, 5.15. Now we are going to bring down the 4 kilonewton force by 4. 
So length is representing newtons in this case. So the scale for this diagram is one newton per, um, per meter, meaning for every newton, I'm using one meter to represent the newton. So I, I went down four, then I'm going across again, I don't have to type in the distance because these lines are transferring the distances. Then once I'm at the second force, I'm in line with the second force, I'm going to bring down, down this. It's a downward force of, of 3.5 meters, so I'm going to bring it down 3.5. Now, once I've done that, I'm going to go across again to the 2 kilonewton force. I'm in now in line with the 2 kilonewton force. I'm going to bring it down further. I'm going down because the forces are downward forces. Now, when I get to the end, this is an upward force, reaction 2. And if you notice, at 4.35 going up, I'm right in line with my zero mark again. Now, this can be a good test if your reaction forces are correct. If your reaction forces are not correct, it simply means that this line will not go back to zero. Right? This is also a good proof that the beam is in equilibrium. Right? So this is simply our shear force diagram. We should label the diagram. At this point, it was 5.15. 5.15 kilonewtons. So what this is saying, throughout this section of the beam, if I cut the beam at this section, or this section, or this section, all throughout this section, the beam is experiencing a shear force of 5.15 kilonewtons. If the beam is able to withstand that shear force, then it will not shear. Then when we get to this point now, everything after this force, you will experience a shear force of 5.15 minus 4, and that answer is 1.15. That's 1.15. Right? That's all it is saying. You can measure this to prove this as well. From here to here, 1.15. Now, this is being experienced throughout section B of the beam. Section C of the beam now is experiencing 1.5 minus 3.5. That is a negative 2.35 shear force. So negative 2.35 and I'm putting my negative sign now once we get to this point we we minus 2 from the 2.35 so now this point if you measure from the zero line is 4.35 so this is 4.35 let me show you how you can calculate this easily. Let me put this here. Let me put this here. Some persons would put this unit at the starting and at the ending. You can do that as well. At the start and at the end of the line. All right. Um, the first beam, you know that it goes up 5.15. Then you're minusing the first force. Then the answer is this. Then from this measurement, you're minusing the second force, which is the 3.5. The then the answer is this. Then from this now, you're minusing 2. Then your answer is this. If you want to know for sure what it is without the calculation, just measure from the zero line. 1.5. Measure down. 2.35 measure down 4.35 if you measure up here you'll realize 5.15 5 okay so that's simply how we measure or draw rather the shear force and this side will undergo positive shear this side will undergo negative shear let me explain to you what I mean by positive and negative shear a shear can be classified positive or negative depending on which part of the beam 
will sync versus which part will not sync. Let me show you the diagram again. If you look at this diagram, there's a force being applied here. There's also a force being applied here. As a result of the forces being applied, the left section is going up while the right section is going down. Right? As a result, the beam will shear in such a manner where the right side of the beam is going to do you the part that is going to move downwards. And if you look, this is the point where we are going to show or used to show whether it's a clockwise motion or an anti-clockwise motion. This part is going down, this part is going up. So we have a clockwise motion. So this is positive shear. When the left side is, the right side rather, is going down. Over here now, the left side is going down, the right side is going up. This is the point where we are considering the shear from. So this is an anti-clockwise motion therefore this is negative shear let's look in context of our drawing now if you look at the drawing all it's saying for all this section of the beam at this point where you have zero shear this section will undergo positive shear that's if the beam will fail so once this beam fails, if the beam is not able to withstand the loads any longer and it's going to shear, the failure that will take place will result in the beam having a positive shear. This simply means if, if the beam is supposed to shear here, for example, the, the right section will go down. If it's supposed to shear here, the right section will still go down. If it's supposed to shear here, anywhere through sections A and B the beam will undergo positive shear, meaning the right side will be the side that is going down. Now, if you move across here, all that it is saying now that through points C and D, it will undergo negative shear. So, if the beam is supposed to fail here, or here, or here, due to shearing, it will be such that the left side will be coming down and if you analyze the forces carefully if you split the beam here there are more forces over this side that would want to lead the beam to push down to the right if we move this line here and the beam is supposed to shear here you'll realize that now there are more forces to the left that would want to push down the beam so that is what the shear force diagram is showing you. And if you notice at this point, you have zero shear. So shearing will not take place here. Shearing failure will not take place here. Bending failure may take place here. But that's a story for another lesson. So if you look at the diagram, the starting point and this point, along with the ending point, you'll experience zero shear. I hope this lesson was informative. I hope you grasped all the concepts that was taught. I want you to share the video, like the page, subscribe to the channel, and share the knowledge. Have a good day.